will give the ball to McClendon. He leaps. Oh. He doesn't get in. He fumbled the football. Carolina holds. The game is over. And Carolina has won the game. With five seconds, he's going to throw it. Howard leaps. He has it. Touchdown, Carolina. Back from the dead to tie the game with two seconds to go. There is a flag down. But holy smokes. Two, two and four in overtime games. Carolina one and three. Here from under center. Give off to Greg Little. Little pulls away. Little is going to score. Carolina wins. Snap back, spot down. The kick is cleanly away. It is good. And it's Parker <laughs> with yes, a sir. 54 yard field goal. And how about them Tar Heels? They do it. Possible win. Snap. Spot. Kick away. High enough. Long enough. It's good. It's good. Carolina has won the game on a 42-yard field goal by freshman Hunter In his end zone. The punt. Very high. Switzer will have room to return it. He fields it at the 40. Coming near side. Switzer at the 50. Switzer, 45, cuts back at the 40, 35, breaks his tackle at the 30, still on his feet. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Ryan Switzer for six. He is doing his best Giovanni Bernard impression. Ryan Switzer again. Bernard fields it at the 26. Can he get the far side? Gio at the 35. Gio, he's at the 50. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Gio, he's going to take it for a touchdown. Are you kidding me? Hey, guys, and welcome in to another edition of the Heel Tough Blog Podcast. It's your host, Anthony Pegnata, with you. And uh, we are here with another one of the guys that is committed in the 2021 class. Again, as you guys know, we've been doing the scouting reports this year. A little bit different. Normally, we're on the field with the guys. We'll interview them after the game. But uh, this past Friday, we got to scout our guy, J.J. Jones, uh, one of the top players in the 2021 class for the Tar Heels at wide receiver, one of the Tar Heels' three big wide receiver commits. And uh, he looked great against Darlington High School. Uh, three catches, 58 yards, two touchdowns for him. And so we bring him in right now. First of all, J.J., how's everything been going, man? Uh, this is uh, – an unprecedented time in the U.S. with everything that's going on with, uh, you know, racial injustice. you got uh, everything going on with COVID-19. So how you and your family been taking care during this time? Uh, you know, we've been doing good. You know, we pray every day and just living every day, one day at a time. Um, taking the right precautions throughout COVID, wearing your mask, staying safe, social distancing, stuff like that. And, you know, I'm just advocating a lot of things, for racial injustice around my city, around my town, just trying to, you know, put put the word out there that there's that there's definitely some injustice going around the nation. But other than that, you know, I'm just just chilling. Well, yeah, I mean, it was awesome for you to probably get back out on that field on Friday night, kind of, you know, take a little bit of time, get back to doing the things that you're used to doing. And uh, you guys looked great. Um, you know, I know uh, you really only played the first half. You came out for that that one drive in, in the second half. But uh, this was a game that you guys uh, knew you had a chance to dominate, and you did. How good did it feel to come out and, and really prove, you know, everybody right that you, not only were you guys going to come out and, you know, start avenging, last year's title game loss in the state championship, but do it in the fashion that you did. Oh, it felt great because, you know, we like we said before, before the game, we wanted to go out there and make a statement, show that, you know, this team, we're, we're going to be a good team this year. And we feel like we got the offensive firepower to put up a lot of points on a lot of teams this season. And the defense have played a great game with a shutout. So we just went out there and we played our hearts out. But we, we just felt great to actually just have a game because – Throughout COVID, we didn't even know if we were going to play football this season. So just being able to be out there was one of the biggest blessings of the whole game. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the guys that are currently committed in the Tar Heels class not being able to play, some of them, their high school careers have already come to an end. But, uh, you know, yours didn't. You guys uh, really got things going early on. You had, of course, the long touchdown catch on the second drive of the game. You know, we were trying to figure out because the TV angle wasn't great. How in the world did you get so open in that end zone, man? <laughs> Uh, 
we're, this little route I run, it's a little comeback and go. Mm-hmm. Um, baited the DB on the comeback. He bit on it real hard. And I just took took that final step and just took off. And just it was daylight from there. Well, that's awesome, man. That's one of the things I love about your tape so much, watching it, is your route running ability. You know, look, you're part of a Tar Heel class that has three really good wide receivers. And uh, I think, you know, when you look at the group, everybody kind of does their own thing that's going to fit this wide receiving core so well. You know, how tight is that relationship between you guys? And, you know, is it also kind of a competitive thing where, you know, you guys are going to have – you know you're going to have to battle going into uh, Chapel Hill next year. Um, is that relationship kind of, uh, you know, like I would say like brothers where you're, you know, really kind to each other, but at the same time it's like, look, man, I know eventually I may have to beat you out. Yeah, I guess you would call it like that. That's, that's a good good analogy. But, yeah, me, Gavin, and Cody, we're, we're all real cool with each other. You know, uh, we all respect each other's games, and we know we know what each player can bring to the table. So, well, I mean, look, it's not like you don't have the experience of playing with talented wide receivers. Now, you got a guy in Adam Randall. Man, he had a great game the other night as well. He can really fly, man. You know how special is he? And and what would that be like if he was to end up at Carolina and you were to be able to continue to play with him uh, after the 2022 cycle? I'll be real special, you know. He's he's one heck of a player, um, you know, great speed, great size. But I mean, his biggest thing is just him being a leader on the field, helping out the teammates and stuff like that. But um, you know, the ceiling for him is going to be incredible. He only played he's only played six high school games his whole career so far. So just the fact that he's got so much potential left and he's already getting this much notoriety, I feel like he's going to have a, a great impact this season and he's going to be a torture for defenses next season. Well, yeah, man, look, in the 4A classification, I saw you guys, uh, I, I, you know, I, I saw some of the other scores around the state, but I think you guys are definitely one of, if not the favorites, to take home that state title. Um, you guys also have a really good quarterback in Ryan Berger, too, so I think you guys definitely have a really good shot. Uh, you know, looking at the 2021 class again, uh, on Friday, right before you guys, uh, of course, took the field, Carolina ends up getting a commitment from Diego Pounds. I know, uh, you know, you guys have really, you know, made it an effort to try to help recruit these guys, not only just put it on the staff, but to go out and, and you know, make your voices heard with some of these guys as well. Uh, you know, w- what was it like recruiting Diego and going into his commitment? Were you maybe a little more aware of what was going to happen a couple of days before us, the writers and everything like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Me and Diego, we go way back. We played AAU basketball against each other. We met each other because we had a little altercation on the basketball court, apparently. So it's, it's just it's kind of crazy just, you know, seeing him. I saw him another recruiting visit. We just started talking. He was a great guy, very cool guy. And then he started getting noticed by UNC. And I was just like, hey, man, you know, you need to come over here. And we, we built more relationship just in the recruiting process. Like, we're we best friends now. And the fact he always texts me and called me, says, should I come, should I come? And, you know, me, Keyshawn, Ra, Nash, we just were all on it 24-7. And it was just he, – he told us a few days before that he was, he was finally coming, and it was just a great feeling. Well, that's great to hear, man. That is fantastic. Uh, you guys have done a great job. Still some really big guys out there, of course. Um, but, you know, I, I, I won't really ask you about any of those guys right now. Uh, the last thing that I want to ask you, you know, I ask this to just about every player whenever I talk to them since Mac Brown came back. You know, it just seems that every time that I talk to somebody, they tell me the same thing. It's just different when Mac Brown recruits you as to other coaches. Is that sort of your experience as well? Is it more of a, you know, a, a different, a, a father-son relationship is what I've heard with a lot of people where, you know, you feel like he cares about you, not just on the field, but off the field as well? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I got to give kudos to the whole coaching staff. The whole coaching staff is great. But just with Mac, Coach Mac Brown, like you, I truly believe he's one of the greatest college, coach, college coaches of all time. So the fact that he he notices me and wants me to be a part of his team, it's just extremely great. I'm just extremely grateful. And like you said before, he cares about all of his players on and off the field, and that's a that's a big thing for me because when I get there, I want to be trust, I want to be able to be cared for, and, you know, just not just be a football player, but also be able to become a young man. All right. Hey, man. Yeah, Mac has the tools to give that to you guys. Uh, So glad you're part of this 2021 class, man. Uh, 
a lot of uh, things ahead of you. I know uh, you got a chance to win a state championship this year. Like I've said, I think you guys have a great opportunity. Um, I'm hoping you guys are going to be able to get it to get that done. Uh, I know I will definitely be circling back around to you uh, sometime, probably during the playoffs, uh, see a little more competitive of a game because I think Darlington was a little overmatched. But, hey, man, congratulations. Great win for you guys. Great talking to you. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk to you sometime later on this season. All right, man? Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right. So that's it for this edition of the Heel Tough Blog podcast. Want to thank J.J. Jones for stopping by with us. Always great talking uh, to some of our 2021 commits. Um, you know, again, we are still kind of pushing along here next week. Uh, we've got two guys that we'll be talking to, um, you know, or, well, potentially, we'll see. Two guys we'll be scouting. One guy for sure that I hope we'll be talking to. Um, we're going to be uh, looking at Kobe Paysauer and Tyrion Ingram Dawkins down in Gaff- at Gaffney High School. Uh, they get ready to take on a dormant team that is one of the best in the state. That is going to be a fantastic matchup. That'll give us a really good look at both of those players. Kobe got off to a great start. Uh, Uh, This past weekend, seven catches, 113 yards, and a touchdown for Gaffney in their win over Boiling Springs. Tyrion Ingram Dawkins, four tackles uh, in the game, three tackles for loss and a sack for him. So uh, a lot of things on the horizon for both of those guys. We'll look forward to scouting them next week. Um, Again, you guys can go back, check out the scouting report that we did on JJ, a really good one, even though he didn't see a ton of action. As we mentioned, he left uh, the game after that first drive of the third quarter because of just how big Myrtle Beach was up. Uh, So, you know, uh, not the greatest look at him. Um, That's why we're going to circle back to him. But still, that first half showed some really good things, really encouraging things, and very excited uh, for what he brings to the table for the Tar Heels on the outside at wide receiver. Um, Also, make sure you guys are keeping an eye on the website. There's a ton of really great stuff on that website um, that you guys can check out on HeelToughBlog.com. Of course, Diego Pound's commitment article is up there. Make sure you guys go back and read that. Um, A lot of the other stuff now, uh, you know, maybe is aged a little bit, but you could go back, of course, reread the recap from the Syracuse game, the the, uh, trench report, the stock report, all that stuff as we get prepared. And we're going to have you covered this week when Carolina is finally back on the field uh, for what is going to be a huge game for them, pretty much resetting their season on the road against Boston College. We are going to have you covered in all facets there, and uh, we hope that you guys uh, will check that out on the website, HeelToughBlog.com. As for you guys that are watching this on the Facebook page, uh, we encourage you guys to like and follow the Facebook page. Uh, that will uh, make sure that it alerts you anytime that we go live with these videos. Of course, uh, normally it's uh, me and Josh. We're in our normal studio everything like that when we do the interviews I do them from home so a little bit different but uh, normally the camera quality is a little bit better than this normally we're a little more dressed up than this but uh, you know look when we're at home we like to lay back and relax just a little bit uh, on an NFL Sunday so um, you know it is a little bit different but yeah normally we'll be uh, on uh, I try to get those out usually Wednesday or Thursday really just kind of depends on uh, what the schedules are but most of the time we'll try to get those out to you uh, as soon as we can on uh, Wednesday so that you guys can go ahead and watch that. Uh, we'll also have the uh, the Boston College preview will be on the website on Thursday, so make sure that you guys are checking all of that out. Uh, as for the people that are listening to this on uh, wherever you listen to your podcast, whether it's Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, any of those spots, make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. When you rate and review it, it helps move, move us up some of those rankings so that people that haven't found us just yet can track us down and when you subscribe that's for you so that you don't miss any of these great episodes of the podcast so once again want to thank jj jones for stopping by want to thank you guys for watching or listening and as always go tour heels